Okay, today we are going to find both square roots of a complex number a plus bi. And the truth is, this will end up to be a complex number as well. So the first step is, we are just going to call this to be, let's say, x plus yi. And the key right here is that we have to make sure a, b, x, and y, they have to be real numbers. So let me just put this down right here. And now to continue this, we can just go ahead and square both sides because this way, this and that will cancel and we'll just get A plus BI on the left hand side and for the right hand side, we will first have this square which is X square and then the real part also has the following this square because I square is negative 1 so multiply with Y square, we will have minus Y square and then the complex part is plus 2 times this and that which is X, Y, I and now as we can see the real part on the left hand side is a, and the real part on the right hand side is x squared minus y squared. That means we can set up x squared minus y squared has to be equal to a. And on the other hand, we see that the imaginary part is b over there, and then we have 2xy here, so that means they have to be equal. So we have 2xy must be equal to b. So we have a system of equations. And to solve this, Perhaps let's just isolate the y right here. So I will just say that y is equal to b over 2x. And then plug this into this y here. So we are going to get x squared minus y, which is b over 2x. And then square that. And then this right here will be equal to a. And then of course, we'll just look at this equation and then work with it. So perhaps I will just square this. So we are going to get x squared minus b squared over 2 squared and then also the x squared so we have 4x squared and that's equal to a cool and then of course we can just multiply everybody by 4x squared so that we don't have fractions anymore and check this out take this multiply by that we will get 4x to the fourth power but let's write it as x squared squared and you will see why next I would like to work out this part, this times that, and that's on the right hand side, and let's move it to the left hand side. So it becomes minus 4a, and then we also have that x squared. And then right here, this times that, they cancel, so we just have minus b squared, and this will be equal to 0. Ta-da! This right here is a quadratic equation in terms of x squared. Then let's just use the quadratic formula to deal with this. So ladies and gentlemen, we know x squared will be equal to, and let's work out the little steps along the way. First, negative b, which that will just give us positive 4a right here. And usually it's plus or minus, but this time we just want a plus, because x squared has to be positive, because x is a real number. So we are just going to take the positive right here, and then open the square root b squared, so negative 4a squared, that will give us 16a squared, and then minus 4 times a, which is 4, so that's 16, and then times negative b squared, negative times negative gives us positive, and then 16b squared, like this, and all divided by 2 times a, which is going to give us 8. And now we can actually clean things up a little bit. Right here, we can factor out the 16 but that's inside of the square root, so it's technically a 4 right here. This has a 4, this has a 4, on the bottom it's an 8, so we can reduce everything by 4. So x squared is equal to a plus square root, 16 is cancelled, and we just have a squared plus b squared over 8 reduced by 4, we get 2. So that's what we have, and uh, of course, right here we can just say, because this is x squared, we just want x. So x is equal to plus or minus of this expression. So that's what we have. And of course, once we have x, we also want to solve for y. And to do so, don't plug into here. I think that would be pretty bad. Plug this back to here, right? Just the inside though, just the black part because that's the x squared and that's what we have right here. So with that being said, we are going to get a plus square root a squared plus b squared over 2 and then minus y squared 
that will be equal to a. And check this out. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 right here, so that this and that have the same denominator. And what I will do next is, I will move the y square to the other side, and now become positive. So I will write that down right here first. And then, you see that I will have to move this to the other side. But you see, we have a over 2. Minus 2a over 2. So that will give us negative a over 2. But we also have this part. So we have the plus square root of a squared plus b squared all over 2. So that's y squared. And of course, if you want to get the y only, we'll just take the square roots on both sides and don't forget the plus or minus. And as you can see, the difference between x and y is this is positive a here, and this is a negative a here, and that's it. Okay, we are done, huh? But the question is, we have plus minus, plus minus, when do we use what? Well, we will have to pay attention to this formula right here. So, a little note right here to finish everything. Because we have 2 times xy is equal to b, and it really depends on the b value from the original expression. Here's the deal. If we have b being positive, well, think about it. We have positive times positive being positive, but also negative times negative being positive. So if b is positive, then we must have x and y. So this is not nd, this is just x and y. Have the same sign. All right? And of course, if b is negative, then x and y have opposite signs. Cool. And of course, this and that does not, they do not include the situation when b is equal to zero. So I should also mention that real quick. If b is equal to zero, then please do not use this formula, do not use this formula. Because if b is equal to zero, that's just square root of a, just worked out <laughs> the regular way, all right? But I will tell you, if b is equal to zero, then that means either, because this is still a legitimate statement, either x is equal to zero or y is equal to zero, all right? So yeah, this is the formula that I used when I was doing the square root of i plus square root of i plus square root of i, so on, so on, so on. The infinite nested square root of i plus square root of i and all that. So yeah, we have this and that, and hopefully everything is clear.